What if truly ancient aliens, aliens that existed before the Big Bang, tried to leave us a message? It would almost certainly sound something like this. No, that's not a joke. If you point your TV antenna up towards a completely blank area of space, you'll pick up a faint, seemingly random signal. Your TV will interpret and show this as the familiar static noise. This faint signal you see and hear traveled nearly 14 billion years and is literally the earliest glimpse we have of the universe. Scientists call it the cosmic microwave background. When scientists first realized it was there in the 1960s, it essentially sealed the deal on the Big Bang theory of the universe. This background radiation is essentially the predicted picture of the moment precisely after the Big Bang. Being able to see that far back is mind-boggling, but what makes this next level strange is the wild claims by this year's Nobel Prize winner in physics, Sir Roger Penrose. You may remember Penrose from my video on quasicrystals. Back in the 1960s, black holes were still a controversial idea. Even Einstein did not believe in them. Roger Penrose thought they were real though, and in 1965 he proved they were a mathematical inevitability using Einstein's own equations of general relativity. As I've noted in previous videos, the scientific community can take a long time to accept controversial results. 55 years, in this case, for proper recognition. The delayed accolades did not slow Penrose down, nor did it make him shy of controversy. His latest controversial claim? That within the cosmic microwave background, he has detected a signal from the previous universe. And this isn't just a theory, he claims the data is over 98% conclusive. Now, most mainstream scientists reject his idea out of hand. To them, the mere notion of a before a Big Bang is nonsensical. There was nothing before the Big Bang, so how can there be a signal from there? But what about the idea of a cyclical universe? You may have heard about a big crunch, where after billions of years, galaxies stop their outward momentum and are sucked back into a single point due to gravity, leading the way to another Big Bang and the next aeon. This notion has a nice philosophical ring to it. This cyclical nature of the universe is also reflected in several religious metaphysical teachings. It seems to make some intuitive sense, alas the data seems to have definitively ruled out this possibility. The universe is expanding, and showing no signs of slowing down. One way to express how the universe expands is the equation of state. This is the ratio of the pressure of space to the energy of space. Most scientists now believe this value is exactly negative one. A value of negative one is consistent with a universe expanding forever. Eventually, stars will burn up and everything will be infinitely dark and far away from each other. A rather depressing end. But this is yet another instance of the scientific community not being willing to accept evidence right before their eyes. We have experimental data to tell us what this value actually is. And the very latest data in this area, as of 2018, shows the value to be negative 1.028 plus or minus 0 0.032. So, yes, negative one is within the margin of error of these latest readings, but it's on the very upper bounds of the margin of error. The evidence seems to show that the value is indeed a bit less than negative one. Believe it or not, the number one reason most established scientists give for believing the value actually is negative one is that negative one is a nice round number, and the observed value is so close that it probably is negative one. 
This seems incredibly naive. If this value is even slightly lower than negative 1, even by a tenth of a percentage point, it has a dramatic effect on the fate of the universe. Penrose, for one, believes that the ratio is indeed lower than negative 1. In his Conformal Cyclic Cosmology Theory, he spells out what this means. The universe will continue to expand forever, but with a ratio lower than negative 1, as time goes on, space continues to expand ever faster and faster. In this model, given around 22 billion more years, the space between subatomic particles will be expanding at over light speed. Literally, all matter will be ripped away into its constituent parts. Pure energy. This point, the asymptote of exponential expansion, is a singularity. Although intuitively it seems that the universe is infinitely larger than we can imagine it, without any matter in the universe, there's no concept of time. There's also no concept of size. What can you measure? There's only energy. And this is mathematically equivalent to what the scientists believe are the initial conditions of the Big Bang. Just as Penrose worked out the equations for black holes over 50 years ago, he worked out the equations here too. And although it boggles the mind, the possibility that our universe is forever repeating in a self-similar fractal nature seems like the explanation that best fits the data. And there's more evidence than just the empirical equation of state value. Any good theory makes predictions. And Penrose did just that. If the universe is actually cyclical in nature, it should be possible to see remnants from the previous universe in the cosmic microwave background. This first moment of our universe is also the last moment of the last. And although the previous universe was ripped apart in the big rip and no matter remains, gravity waves will still be rippling out and radiation wells from supermassive black holes dying would affect the energy density of the cosmic microwave background. Penrose found that in this observed picture of the Big Bang, we can detect such remnants. There is still some scientific dispute over whether Penrose actually did prove this beyond what could happen by random chance, but Penrose claims the certainty of his numbers is over 98% and I tend to believe him. This is evidence of a signal from a universe previous to ours, but it is not necessarily a signal from an intelligent entity in that previous universe. But that possibility is not too far-fetched. If a civilization such as ours can end up standing the test of time, withstanding any global catastrophes that come our way and eventually even outliving our sun's lifetime, we will someday come to face the inevitable end of the universe as everything around us is ripped apart to make room for the next eon. Perhaps with our advanced knowledge of this and the capabilities that come with billions of years of technological advancement, we could position black holes and spinning neutron stars such that we'd leave an impact onto the next age. Perhaps it's a message. Even some sort of attempt at engineering the formation of the next age may be possible. And it's likely whatever intelligence emerged during the last age had these same dying thoughts. Were they able to pull it off? When posed this question, Penrose says that the signals may be out there, but perhaps we just haven't looked hard enough. We continue to get better and better images and data from the cosmic microwave background, and someday we may find this irrefutable proof of an intelligent signal from the previous eon. Until then, we can at least call out the scientific community for seeing W equals negative 1.028 plus 0 0.032, and believing that number is in actuality a nice round negative 1. 
While they may favor the mathematical cleanness of a universe that ends with a cold isolation, the evidence does not support it. And maybe, if we never do uncover a secret message in the Big Bang, our species will live long enough to leave one for the next eon. Thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. What do you think about Penrose's ideas on the universe and possible aliens from previous eons? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. For more content like this, please be sure to subscribe, and please like and share if you enjoyed.